In this video, I'd like to talk about what it means to create a perfect clinching argument. And a clinching argument is something that I know that some of you have been struggling with recently. Let's start with a definition. Clinching argument is a long word, but the word clinch means to confirm or settle. So if we're looking at the whole word together, really a clinching argument is one which confirms or settles a debate. In other words, it's one which properly ends a discussion about a question. And if you think about an essay, all of them are a discussion or a debate. Now we can think about this in a number of different ways. But really, your clinching argument is the thing that's going to pop up in a specific place in your essay plan. Because most of you with an essay plan are going to follow something that looks a lot like this. You're going to have an introduction, you're going to have a paragraph that's in support of the essay question, you're going to have a paragraph against the essay question, and you're going to have a conclusion. And it's really in the conclusion where your clinching argument should be set. That's the place where you're aiming to really nail that clinching argument. And the clinching argument is the thing that's going to get you those extra few points from the examiner. I like to think about this as the mic drop moment. So in the conclusion, this is where you make such a clinching argument that you walk away dropping that mic and walking off stage. Or if you like to think in sporting terms, this is your knockout blow. You write a sentence or two that is so good that it literally knocks the examiner off their feet. Or if you're a baker, this is the cherry that sits atop that absolutely delicious cake that you've made in your main paragraphs. Now let's talk about what a clinching argument is and what a clinching argument is not. Now firstly, a clinching argument is not a conclusion that repeats what you've already said. So a clinching argument, really importantly, does not just repeat the content that you've put in those main paragraphs. It most definitely doesn't ever, ever sit on the fence. So a clinching argument will not say the answer to this question is a bit of this and a bit of that. It's most definitely conclusive and judgmental. So let's look at what a clinching argument does. And a clinching argument really goes beyond those two things there. A clinching argument definitely, like a judge, weighs up the evidence and gives a very clear judgment about which side of the evidence is stronger or weaker. And really importantly, they give a reason. So for example, if you were looking at whether the Middle Ages or the early modern period had more progress, a clinching argument would definitely make a judgment about whether it's the Middle Ages or the early modern period, not both, and they'd give a reason. Let's look at an example. This question would be looking at an essay that said that the German people were controlled by the Nazi party. So this example, I think, is a clinching argument. The German people were certainly controlled by the Nazi party. Although there are examples of opposition, these are so small that they do not outweigh the fact that the vast majority, either through fear or propaganda, blindly followed Nazi policy. There are two more things that a clinching argument does. Let's look at the second. A clinching argument most definitely takes into account context. All essay questions are going to give you a length of period to look at. A clinching argument might consider that length of period. It also might consider what comes before that period, what comes after that period, or what is happening at the time. A clinching argument is definitely the sort of thing where somebody with a lot of contextual knowledge about that period is going to be able to bring it in and make a different, more substantial, more interesting point. Let's look at an example. Considering the struggle the German people had gone through under the Weimar government, they were desperate. Therefore, the Nazi use of violence in the years 1933 to 34 had a greater impact than it normally than it would have normally, enabling them to take power easily. So this example here refers back to the Weimar government. That question probably didn't even include the Weimar government, but looking back and using the context, that candidate is able to make a more interesting point. 
Let's look at the third thing a clinching argument might do. And it might well use a metaphor or an analogy. In other words, a comparison in which one thing is said to be like another. And I think often really brilliant or gifted historians in their clinching argument use metaphor or analogy to make a bigger, more interesting point. And again, let's look at an example. And this example is yet again about Nazis and the Nazi takeover of power. So, for example, the Nazi takeover of power was like a fire. Although luck through the Reichstag fire had caused the spark that lit the fire, it was violence that fueled it and fed the flames that ultimately led to its success. So, a really clear example there of using a metaphor to make a bigger point. And I think metaphor is something that a lot of you really should be thinking about in that conclusion. Now, let's sum up the three golden rules of a clinching argument, because I think you can do this very successfully and you can also do this very badly. And for me, there are three golden rules. Firstly, it's got to be crystal clear. If I can't tell what your argument is, that's a problem. A clinching argument has got to be clear. It's also got to be concise. In those examples that we just went through there, none of them were more than about four or five lines. That's key. Short. Less is more. And thirdly, they've got to be conclusive. They need to be really, really judgmental and not sit on the fence. If you do that brilliantly, you're going to produce a clinching argument. Good luck.